This conference will now be recorded. Okay, in the last session, we talked about document splitting currencies. We also decided what will be the leading ledger, what will be the non leading ledger. Now, let us try to understand how currencies will get converted. Let me write down currency conversions. When we talk about currency conversion, we understood that there are 10 type of currencies which can be used in S4 HANA for each company code. Out of 10 currencies, three currencies we will be majoritily using as company code level. One currency is at a transaction level. If I put them, these points, Okay, these are the currencies. When it comes to transaction currency, we talked about this is fixed currency. So sorry, this is at this is assigned at transaction level. It is not fixed based on transaction. Currency will change. When we say based on the transaction currency will change. If your transaction has taken place in dollar, your transaction currency will be dollar. If your transaction is taking place in INR, it will be INR. If your transaction is taking place in Euro, your currency will be Euro. So it is not fixed. Depending on the nature of transaction, your transaction currency will differ. Next one local currency. This is assigned at company code level. When we say this is assigned at company code level, I'll say it is fixed. And all transactions will be converted to local currency. When we say all transactions will be converted into local currency, if your transaction is taking place in local currency INR or any of your company code currency, the same currency will become your company code currency or local currency. Sometimes if your transaction is taking place in some other currency, let's say dollar, euro or any other system will convert from that currency into local currency and then it will show local currency as INR dollar, whatever it is because this is assigned at company code level. Whatever the currency that you're assigning at company code level, it is fixed. And whenever you talk about company code currency, for every company code, your company code currency is a single currency. This cannot be changed. Any currency that you are using apart from your company code currency, that currency will be converted or translated into your local currency and then it will get recorded. Similarly, when we talk about group currency, this is assigned at client level. Group currency is assigned at client level and it is fixed. This is also fixed. Here also same. All transactions will be converted to group currency same point here also all the currencies will be converted into group currency because group currency is maintained at client level anything you are maintaining at client level is common for all your company codes third one which means your fourth one is hard currency or index based currency now this is assigned at country level and it is also fixed and same thing all transactions will be converted to group currency when we talk about this is also fixed 
and this is maintained at country level all transactions will be converted to converted to not group currency this is hard currency hard or index based currency now what do we mean by this currency conversion currency translation let us try to understand your origin for every transaction is document currency or transaction currency in short let's say you are recording a business transaction or you are trying to write an accounting entry you will be writing the accounting entry based on the actual transaction if you are paying money if you are receiving money if you are buying if you are selling if you are spending whatever can be your business transaction every business transaction will have a base currency when i talk about base currency whether you are doing the transaction in inr or you are doing the transaction in dollars or you are doing the transaction in euro or any other currency each and every transaction will have the currency in it because everything that you are talking about business transaction it will have monetary impact when you talk about monetary impact there is a financial involvement there is a accounting impact how much money you are receiving how much money you are paying either money inward or money outward money is coming inside or money is going outside in way of asset liability income expense in any of the ways if money is coming inside or going outside you need to track how you are receiving money and how you are sending the money or paying the money according to the nature of a transaction you will come to know this is the transaction this transaction is taking place in let's say inr currency dollar currency whatsoever now in our example let's say i'll put sony india as the below currencies i'll write the same currencies okay here we are talking about this is variable this is fixed these are fixed whatever i'll mention in let's say green are fixed whatever i put in blue this is variable this blue currency is not fixed the green currencies are fixed now next one when i mention this we need to list out a transaction i will say let's say i'll say expenses paid 12000 inr i'll say that expenses paid 12000 inr as a business transaction if i assume that expenses paid at 12000 inr before i update the transaction figures in my company code before the entry is getting posted what you are going to look at is you are going to look at the business transaction based on the business transaction you are going to record the accounting as per your accounting you have to record the transaction in the original transaction currency if your transaction is taking place in inr irrespective of your company code currency irrespective of your local currency you have to record the transaction in the original currency only if it is inr entry you have to record the entry in inr if it is dollar transaction your transaction must be recorded in dollars if it is euro in euro if it is a singapore dollar or any other currency in the respective currency you have to update the entry because the transaction currency is variable now in this your currency will be inr in this your transaction currency will be inr this let me put blue color this is your variable now the on the other side if i am talking about local currency if i consider sony india according to sony india let's assume that your company code currency for any indian company code will be inr group currency majoritarily all all the companies will proceed with group currency as a dollar we will also consider dollar as the group currency third one your index currency or hard or your hard currency let me assume that this i am considering as euro
let's say that we have a requirement wherein you have to also submit or prepare the reports in euro currency these are my three fixed currencies these are three fixed currencies which means you have no way you have no option you have no choice to change local currency from INR to any other currency group currency from dollar to any other currency hard currency from euro to any other currency because local currency is coming from your company code you cannot change your company code group currency is coming from your client you cannot change your client and hard currency or index based currency is coming from country you cannot change your company code country because these three points are coming from the configuration assignments these configuration assignments are one time activities once you maintain these settings cannot be changed later on based on the transaction currency system will convert this now when you're talking about conversion we need to go in the same sequence transaction currency local currency group currency hard currency or index based currency if i'm talking about this value i'll put inr is 12000 if i put inr is 12000 now i need to put the other numbers the remaining three numbers are automatically updated by system so here i'll put manual input by user A transaction currency value will be given manually by the user second one local currency auto updated by system this is also same automatically updated by system how system is updating your local currency INR group currency dollar hard currency euro based on one manual input for this again there is some configuration at the currency level at the client level at company code level at country level you are going to maintain this based on this system will understand which currency needs to be converted from what currencies based on what exchange rate for this what SAP will do let's say if I look at local currency above local currency I have only one currency if I look at local currency you you need to look at the current currency and then look top before this local currency we have how many currencies if I look at the transaction currency above transaction currency there is nothing above transaction currency there is nothing when you say that above transaction currency there is nothing there is no way that system can interpret or system can imagine something system will not interpret system will not imagine anything if it is the first currency first currency at your transaction is always transaction currency or document currency this transaction or document currency must be a user manual input assuming that I'll input 12,000 here I'll input 12,000 INR here when I input a 12,000 INR here I am inputting 12,000 INR because the first currency second one I am talking about local currency when I talk about local currency if I select local currency above local currency which means before we come to local currency stage or state position above the local currency there is one more currency called a transaction currency above local currency there is single currency which is transaction so no other option system has to convert from transaction currency to local currency system is going to convert from your transaction currency to local currency in this case your local currency is INR your transaction currency is also INR if your local currency and a transaction currency are same system is not going to convert anything it will straight away put the same number because it is the same currency because it is the same currency system will not do any conversion conversion will come into picture only if there are two different currencies if, if it is INR INR there is no point of conversion straight away system will put INR here now when you talk about the third currency which is group currency when you come to group currency this is also auto updated by SAP but when I look at my group currency before my group currency or above my group currency I have got two type of currencies one is transaction currency the second one is local currency here there is a question here there is a question because it is not a single currency before group currency it has got two currencies this question will come from which currency should I convert 
the group currency should system convert from local currency or from the transaction currency now you cannot decide either to convert from transaction or to convert from local currency based on the transaction this you need to define as as part of your configuration which means whatever the setting that you are going to define for your group currency conversion it's a one time setting based on that system will always convert from the respective currency you need to decide to convert your group currency either from local currency or from the transaction currency you have you have an option which you need to choose only at one time which is at the time of your initial configuration at the time of your initial configuration if you assume that you want to convert group currency from local currency all the transactions all the transactions will update group currency based on the local currency or if you want to update your group currency based on the transaction currency this is also possible but all the transactions will update your group currency based on the transaction currency once you decide that this is what i want to update later on this cannot be changed okay now here i'll take one more point okay i'll put here only this is manual input and no conversion no conversion next one local currency this is not a manual input auto updated by system this is always tc to lc transaction currency to local currency because there is no option you have only one currency and when it comes to group currency which is a dollar you have got two currencies above this you need to decide either to convert from transaction currency currency to group currency or from local currency to group currency majoritily we will proceed with local currency to group currency not transaction to group so here i'll put local currency to group currency when i put local currency to group currency system is always going to convert local currency into the group currency in short your dollar is always converted from inr and your inr is always converted from transaction currency now these are the standard fixed logics which are to be defined at the time of your company code setup as part of your initial baseline config all these parameters will be set up later on you are not supposed to change this this is part of your baseline configuration this is part of your org structure now here what i am going to do i am going to convert inr if i want to convert inr i need exchange rate i need exchange rate for example if i assume exchange rate as 80 rupees so what system will do it will take 12000 divided by 80 and it will arrive at 150 i'll put 150 dollar this is how system is going to convert this and this number is always going to get determined automatically by the system we have to maintain the exchange rate in the system based on the exchange rate the numbers are automatically converted and next one is your index based currency or hard currency when you talk about index or hard currency if i select this currency above this currency or before this currency i have got three currencies i have got my transaction currency i have got my local currency i have got my group currency again you need to select based on which currency you want to convert your hard currency or index based currency point number 1 you can select a transaction currency point number 2 you can select local currency point number 3 you can select group currency but whatever you select cannot be changed later on here also same thing you will be proceeding to convert from local currency to hard currency or local currency to index based currency so here also i'll put local currency to hard currency or index based currency we are assuming this is euro let's assume that this is equivalent to for example euro rate is approximately 80 so let's say 100 is the euro rate system is going to take your local currency which is 12000 inr divided by 100 whatever it is i'll put 120 euro here this is how system is going to convert the number 
based on the exchange rate that you are updating in the system yes sonali go ahead oh sir i want to know like is it is this something which is standard or uh, like based on the business requirement we can say this is based on the business requirement we have to explain these currency conversions to your client and whatever the conversion that they say they will tell that no we will always convert our local currency for local currency there is no option because you have only currency one currency above it you have to go with transaction currency only for local currency this is straight forward you cannot change for local currency when it comes to group currency above group currency there are two more currencies one is transaction the other one is local your client will decide whether to convert from transaction currency to derive your dollars or to consider local currency to derive your dollars based on okay. the client requirement you are going to set it up but most commonly this will be always local currency to group currency because you want to maintain a fixed logic i don't want to have some in some cases my dollar is derived based on inr in some other cases my dollar is derived based on some other currency if i proceed with transaction because this is not a fixed one yes got it yeah right so i don't want to have uh, you know the mixed logic some entries are converted with different currency some other entries are converted with some other currency this confusion nobody would like to have it that is why they always proceed with a fixed logic your inr is always going to be fixed so when i say my dollar when i say my group currency it is straight forward for me my group currency is always based on my local currency which is inr whenever i want to know how my dollars are arriving in my transaction i'll straight away tell look at what is the inr to dollar rate on this particular date that is how the dollar is getting converted similarly okay. hard currency or index based currency here you have got three currencies you will again pick any one clear so if the requirement says that uh, i don't need for local currency like uh, transaction currency to local currency they don't need that uh, sorry for uh, local currency to group currency i would say because uh, above local currency we have only one option so that is a default but then for Correct. local currency to group currency my uh, client would suggest me whether they want it in transaction currency or local currency that would be depending upon the business requirement correct right yes you are right okay 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 got it yeah. yeah okay this is how system is going to convert and next one you will have exchange rates next one i write exchange rates so for every currency pair we have to update exchange rate in system or in sap for every currency pair we have to update exchange rate in sap when you talk about currency pair we are talking about two different currencies if i am talking about inr inr i am not talking about currency pair i am talking about currency pair only when there are two different currencies i should call it as a currency pair only when i am comparing inr with other than inr inr to dollar inr to euro inr to singapore dollar inr to any other currency and when i talk about this currency pair i have to make sure that exchange rates are updated in system when you talk about exchange rate you have two type of exchange rate one is your direct quotations second one is your indirect quotations you need to understand the exchange rate is of two types one is direct quotation the other one is indirect quotation now when you talk about direct quotation we are talking about conversion from foreign currency 
to local currency when you talk about direct conversion or direct quotation we are talking about conversion from foreign currency to local currency is basically represented as direct quotation when you are talking about indirect quotation we are talking about conversion from local currency to foreign currency when you talk about conversion from local currency to foreign currency we are talking about indirect quotation just give me a minute sorry so when you talk about indirect quotations we are talking about conversion from local currency to foreign currency for example if i take about if i take one example i'll write example number 1 let's say salary paid in not salary because we don't normally make salary there is sales made in or uh, sales for I'll, i'll simply put simple round figure numbers 1000 uh, aed to a dubai customer we don't normally sell it in foreign currency purchases for 1000 aed i said can you take us i'm not taking us because we already have the dollar here so to avoid that confusion i'm taking other currency which is not listed here for the transaction currency uh, for the transaction yeah yeah this okay. is transaction currency okay thank you so i'm taking purchases for 1000 aed from a dubai supplier assuming that we purchased for 1000 dirhams from a supplier who is supplying from dubai in general if you are purchasing anything from dubai you will be receiving the material or you will be receiving the product or service from dubai supplier anybody who is supplying from dubai they will be supplying to us in their local currency which is dubai dirhams which is your dubai dirhams when they are submitting the invoice or when they are giving you the bill in dirhams your transaction currency becomes dirhams aed your transaction is now taking place in aed how this transaction will be converted into the actual accounting entry when it comes to sap fico if i look at this point number 1 these are the currencies that are to be updated okay these points again i'll put here okay now look at only this example you purchased for 1000 aed from a dubai supplier now you are recording this in company code of sony india in which these are the applicable currencies you have to look at three fixed currencies these three fixed currencies are used for three fixed reporting requirements inr is used for local reporting to be submitted within india and dollar is used for group reporting to be submitted according to your corporate or consolidation purpose hard currency or index based currency is used for submitting reports according to country specific requirements in india if there is any other currency related requirement you will be treating that country specific requirement currency as index or hard currency according to this what we need to do you know that what is the currency in which your transaction took place we are purchasing from dubai and the supplier had given you the bill in dubai dirhams in short my transaction currency will become aed here my transaction currency will become aed i am going to update while recording the entry 1000 aed
while recording the transaction i am going to mention as 1000 aed now when it comes to local currency it is inr but you do not know what is inr you do not know what is dollar you do not know what is euro system requires all the currencies to be updated in order to save the transaction to save this transaction from where we are going to get the currencies how system will understand this is the currency that i need to pick and this is the conversion this is the exchange rate that i need to pick it is all based on your configuration which you are updating as part of your baseline config now we understood local currency is coming from company code while recording any transaction you will be recording transaction at a company code level while recording any transaction company code becomes mandatory the moment you put company code system understands for this particular company code what is the currency that you have assigned the moment you put company code system understands for this company code inr is the local currency based on the company code local currency is coming in company code inr is part of configuration you cannot change this similarly whatever the client that you are logging in while logging into the system you will put client number 800 400 100 200 whatever it is based on the client system will understand what is your client currency which is used as your group currency and similarly whenever you record any transaction you are again going to have your company code your company code will be assigned to a country based on the company code assigned country system will determine what will be the hard currency what will be the index based currency in short system will easily understand these three currencies the moment you put your company code these three currencies are automatically updated you don't need to mention my local currency is inr my group currency is dollar my index based currency is euro system knows it because these are fixed values coming from the configuration but your transaction is not fixed your transaction is not fixed it is variable depending on the nature of transaction this can be any currency you can replace aed with any currency that is there in the world because as a business you are free to perform business transaction with any country you can buy and sell to any country you can import from any country there are no such restrictions the only point is you need to convert the number and then submit the reports according to the reporting currency when we talk about report according to the reporting currency if it is local reporting local currency inr group reporting group currency dollar and then if you have any other country specific reporting either hard currency or index based currency in our example euro now here for system to convert the number you need exchange rates we need exchange rate now if i put exchange currency pairs we talk about exchange currency pair now we need conversions for above entry in below currencies point number 1 how many currencies are involved we need to write point number 1 it is your ad point number 2 it is your inr point number 3 it is your dollar point number 4 it is your euro there are four currencies involved in this particular transaction how these four currencies are getting derived or how these four, four currencies are getting updated is what we need to understand how system is actually converting or updating four currencies this is again based on the config which we are doing at the beginning if i look at aed if i look at aed aed is a manual input when i talk about aed is a manual input aed is something that you are automatically writing now when you talk about inr inr is coming from where inr is coming from your transaction currency what is your transaction currency aed your transaction currency is aed so according to your system setting you are going to derive inr from transaction currency in this case a transaction currency is aed so here conversion will be aed to inr here system is going to de derive the number or system is going to convert inr based on aed currency second one this is your dollar dollar also we assumed you have two currencies above as part of your configuration you can decide either to convert from transaction currency or to convert from the local currency if we are planning to convert from local currency 
your local currency will be INR. In this case, your dollar is derived from local currency. In short, it will be INR to dollar. Third one, if you talk about hard currency or indexed based currency, this is derived from again local currency. Even though you have three different currencies above this, as part of our requirement, we have assumed or we have decided we are going to convert hard currency or index based currency based on local currency. Here also I will put INR to Euro. Now you have three different currency pairs. For each currency pair you need to update. For each currency pair you need to update exchange rate. When you are talking about exchange rate you need to talk about two type of exchange rates. One is direct quotation. The other one is indirect quotation. When you talk about direct quotation you are talking about foreign currency to local currency. When you are talking about indirect quotation, we are talking from local currency to foreign currency. These two points we need to understand. Before you convert your exchange rate, make sure you are able to identify what is your local currency. When you are able to identify... May I, may I ask um, a question? Yes. Okay. So what in case you decide to um, convert from the local from the group group currency to hard currency. So th those two are two foreign currency. What would you um, how would you convert it? If you decide to convert, then here it will be dollar to euro. Okay. This will become dollar to euro. Okay. Thanks. Sir, uh, group these are coming always, from. Uh, sorry. Uh, yes. Sir, group yeah. currency is always sir, USD by default in SAP, sir. Or we can set up any other currency apart from USD. You can set up any currency, but once you set up, you are not supposed to change it. It's a one time setting. If you decide that it is dollar, then for all your company codes, for all your transactions, it must be dollar. You cannot change in between. Change is not possible. Oh, but it is not uh, fixed, right? USD. I mean, uh, group currency is not fixed as USD. Not fixed. It you can, can select any currency, but majoritally dollar will be the group currency. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now let me update these currencies. We are talking about currency conversion. For currency conversion, we need to maintain exchange rate at currency pair. We need to update exchange rate for currency pair. When you are talking about currency pair, you need to update from and to and to and from. So if I put currency pair is equal to from to from currency to to currency and to currency to from currency you need to update from from to to and then to to from like it let's say if i know one currency i should know the other currency if i know the other currency i should know the other currency in short if i'm talking about first currency i'm talking about aed AED is your base currency. AED is your base currency. If I go to the second currency, because at AED level, there is no point of conversion. Since it is the initial first currency, there is no conversion here. When I go to the second currency, which is INR, at the INR level, I have conversion here. How I am converting here? I am converting here based on AED to INR. This is my conversion. So in system, you need to update the exchange rate from AED to INR. At the same time, INR to AED. This both must be updated. If you say that, no, I will update only AED to INR, that is not, not sufficient. You must update currency pair. Exchange rates are always updated at currency pair. Currency pair is nothing but from to to and then to to from. If you know AED, you must know INR. If you know INR, you must know AED. Because 
you are going to deal with AED currency. Either ways, you have to derive at the currencies. If I put AED, system should give me equivalent INR. If I put INR, system should give me equivalent AED. This is what when you talk about currency pair. One side, if I update, then that is wrong. You need to strictly update both the sides whenever you are talking about exchange rate. Even when you are updating or even when you are instructing, informing to your client, you should always make sure currencies are always updated at two level. From currency to two currency at the same time, two currency to from currency. This is what you call it as currency pair. Exchange rate is always updated at currency pair level. Similarly, when you talk about dollar here, your dollar you are converting from INR. So here you should have USD to INR. At the same time, you should also have INR to dollar. You must update what is one dollar equivalent to INR. Similarly, what is one INR equivalent to dollar? On the other side, if you write about Euro, Euro is also coming from your local currency, which is INR. So you are converting Euro with INR. Make sure you put this conversion rate from both the sides. Point number one, Euro to INR. And you are also updating INR to Euro. This is what we mean, what exactly? The currency pair is once you know that this is the currency pair you should put the exchange rates in the system when you put the exchange rate in the system you have to update let's say once i'll put direct quotation on the other side i'll put indirect quotation all the numbers, whatever you post in SAP are updated based on these settings. If you're not clear on this setting, we will not understand how different currencies are getting updated in the system because these things will get updated automatically. We have no control on it. The moment you put the number automatically system will start converting into the target numbers. It will show the different different figures. How these numbers are getting converted. What is the exchange rate? How system is getting converted? This is all the basic setting that you define. At the time of company code, these logics are defined in the system. Later on, these are not supposed to be changed. If you change later on, there will be something called inconsistency. If there is any inconsistency, your reporting is not possible. I cannot say for some for a few months, I will update my group currency as dollar. Later on, I want to convert my group currency from dollar to some other currency. So for the first two months, system will have the group currency value as dollar. Later on, if you wanted to update group currency from dollar to euro, it will not allow because there is some inconsistency. How will system show two months of transactions in dollar and after that euro impossible system will tell no currency cannot be changed at this position. When we know these points are not changeable later on, we have to be very conscious at the beginning itself how these are updated. Yes, thumbs. go ahead. So if I'm understanding this, sir, you're saying that um, what do, while, while doing the configuration, you can't really pick uh, whether you want to do direct or indirect. You have to do both then. Because from this example right here, you're saying that we have to convert from um, transaction currency to local currency and then from um, local currency local to currency back to transaction currency. So that means at any point in time during configuration, we have to do the settings for both direct and indirect, not one or the other, but one and the other. Correct? Correct. Correct. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Roy, yes. What's your question? So if a client, right, say they have been running SAP for last five, six years, and they only have all their vendors and suppliers sending all the transactions in one currency, which is say USD. But let's say next year, they're getting some new vendors who are going to make some transactions from different part of the world, uh, and they're going to do different currencies. 
um, in that case, how can we do this configuration? Um, let's say they are doing going to send from Canadian dollars or you know just any other currency. Yeah, in um, that case, it will be your transaction currency. As we discussed, this can be this is variable. You can put any currency here. Because if you are sending anything to vendor or if you are receiving anything from your customer, this is nothing but you have done a transaction with customer or with a vendor. Correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. So whenever you do a transaction, your transaction will have a currency. If you are dealing with Canada customer, now your source is India, target is Canada. Agree? If you are talking from Indian company code perspective. Yes. Now, if you are selling something from India, you have to sell as per Indian norms. So in okay. India, you are not supposed to sell anything in foreign currency. You can receive in foreign currency, but you have to show your sale in local currency. So your bill to Canadian person will be in INR. But when he is paying, he can convert equivalent INR to Canadian dollars. He can remit it to you in Canadian dollars. Uh -huh. Okay. Clear. Got it? Yeah, and and this these settings are available both in ECC and S4, or is it? Yeah, specific? these are common. Okay. There is no change in this setting. This logic setting, everything is exactly same from ECC to S4 HANA. The only point is in ECC you can use three currencies. In S4 HANA you can use ten currencies. Apart from that, the currency conversion logic, hundred percent the same setting, same logic. Okay. Now, thank you. Let me update. Yeah, currencies. Let me update now. When I update the currencies, first, what I need to do, I need to understand what is my direct quotation, what is my indirect quotation. In the direct quotation, I'll put pair, and here also I will put pair, and here I'll put rate. Here also pair followed by rate. So first one, I have AED to INR, INR to AED. In the above statement, we have assumed what is indirect quotation, what is direct quotation. If I go back to that point, direct quotation is nothing but conversion from local foreign currency to local currency. Foreign currency to local currency is represented as direct quotation and local currency to foreign currency is represented as indirect quotation. Before we update this setting, you need to update what is your local currency. Let me put local currency is equal to INR. Because this logic changes the moment your company code is changing, the moment your company code currency is updated, the way that you are treating will be different. Your conversion is always based on local currency to foreign currency, foreign currency to local currency. Now, what is your local currency? What is your foreign currency? is identified only when you list out a particular example or a particular scenario. In this case, this is our scenario <clears throat> in which you did a transaction in AED. According to this, you have these many currencies to be updated. Based on this, I am going to write currency pairs. Direct quotation, we assume that this is foreign currency to local currency. So pair will be first one. I'll put AED to INR is my first currency. The same thing I'll have to put the other way around. If I put other way around INR to AED, this becomes my indirect quotation. Second one, I'll have to put dollar. When I need to update dollar, for dollar, I'm not referring to AED. I'm not converting my dollar from AED, so I don't need to convert from AED dollar rates. It's not relevant. Because for every currency, you need to understand the logic. How we are going to convert the dollars? Are we going to convert dollars from transaction currency? No. According to our setup, we are going to convert dollar from local currency. Our local currency is INR. So your dollar is again fixed conversion. Dollar to INR, INR to dollar. So my direct quotation will be dollar to INR here and indirect quotation will be INR to dollar. 
third one is your euro currency update euro is your hard currency or index based currency for this also there is a fixed logic either you convert from local currency or you convert from group currency or you can convert from transaction in our example we are proceeding with local currency local currency for us is inr and this is hard currency fixed euro same point you are going to put euro to inr here and here inr to euro in short for us to update for us to update this transaction in the system for us to update this transaction in system this many exchange rates are mandatory these exchange rates are mandatory without which system will start throwing error conversion rate or exchange rate is not applicable here or exchange rate is not maintained if you are not maintaining on a regular intervals you will end up getting incorrect figures because exchange rate is a something which will keep on fluctuating how you are going to freeze or how you are going to consider the exchange rate that is another point whether you want to consider exchange rate on a daily basis or you want to consider the exchange rate on a monthly basis on an on a average rate something called spot rate something called as mer rate either you want to convert based on the spot rate which is available on that particular day or you want to convert based on the average rate which is considered as month end exchange rate either spot rate or mer rate month end exchange rate majority majorityly we will be proceeding with month end exchange rate when i put month end exchange rate i need to understand i need to understand that this month i will be converting all my figures with last month rate and at the month end i am going to reevaluate my exchange rate when i am reevaluating you are going to have two functionalities one is currency translation the other one is currency conversion sorry currency valuation you will be valuating the foreign currency you will also convert your local currency to foreign currency now to update the exchange rate here let's assume that aed to inr let's say aed to inr is somewhere around now let me put here let's say usd at the rate 80 and i'll put aed at the rate 22 and euro at the rate 95 just imaginary figures so don't con convert compare with the current rate i'm just taking the imaginary figures when you talk about dollar rate you will be hearing that i'm i'm talking with respect to inr i'm talking with respect to inr with respect to inr when you talk about dollar rate you will be hearing that this is 80 rupees is the dollar rate similarly 22 is the aed rate and 95 is the euro rate now when it comes to dollar when it comes to dollar you have to look at where is your dollar dollar is here and a dollar is here now at both places how you are going to convert if you know inr how dollar is derived if you know dollar how inr is derived so it is not the same way every time it will differ it will change based on source currency currency you are going to put a logic to arrive at the target currency if your source is inr target will be dollar if your source is dollar your target will be inr when you talk about direct quotation it is always star when i talk about direct quotation i am going to put star star is represented by multiplication okay star is represented by multiplication i'll put multiply here whenever you are talking about a direct quotation you are going to straight away put a multiplication when i talk about indirect quotation here i am going to put a slash when i put a slash i mean here divided by i am going to put a divided by if i am talking about exchange rate point number 1 i can put star here i can put star here now this star is with 1 this divided by is with 1 star is with 1 divided by is also with 1 when i am talking about star with 1 divided by with 1 what i am going to do here if i look at the first one aed let's say this is aed this is your aed 
for AED I am assuming 22 for this 22 what I will do I will put is equal to 1 multiplied by 1 star your rate what is your AED rate 22 I will put is equal to 1 multiplied by 22 22 will be your direct quotation if I put my indirect quotation this is divided by is equal to 1 divided by 22 this will be my indirect quotation this will be my indirect quotation similarly if I talk about dollar for dollar let me put another color now these are all very very important if you are not clear with this it will be difficult for us to understand how numbers are coming as a FICO consultant we have to play with the numbers if you are getting a confused how numbers are coming how numbers are getting converted so we will not be able to get the hold of what is happening in system now here also same thing dollar rate I have mentioned as 80 here so direct quotation I said star it is always 1 star 1 multiplied by 80 80 will be the direct quotation indirect quotation what I am going to do this is always 1 divided by this is 80 this will be your indirect quotation for dollar similarly when I talk about euro euro is 95 If I talk about euro here same point is equal to 1 multiplied by 95 95 will be your direct quotation similarly if I talk about indirect quotation I am talking about divided by is equal to 1 divided by 95 this will be your indirect quotation for euro now when you do it you have to understand how system is going to do this and it is important how you are going to maintain this direct quotation indirect quotation direct quotation is always updated in this way indirect quotation point number one you can update in this way point number two you can put same direct quotation in the system normally in this way we don't update in the system okay normally in this way we don't update in the system in system you are going to put both positions 22 22 only in system everywhere you put 22 only when you put 22 system will do this calculation before it will convert the number it will check where did you maintain the rate whether you maintained in the direct quotation or you maintained in the indirect quotation if you put in the direct quotation this number multiplied by the target currency similarly if you maintain it here this number multi multiplied by your target currency so system is going to pick the number but we need to understand on what logic on what basis you are going to update in real time you don't put numbers like this in real time you don't put numbers like this so what you are going to do you are going to update same number at both places this will be 22 this will be 80 this will be 95 in real time when you talk about AED to INR INR to AED you are going to put 22 at both places but you need to look at where you are updating this 22 at one position you are updating a 22 at direct quotation on the other side you are updating same 22 as indirect quotation you are updating as direct quotation in one side on the other side you are updating same number as indirect quotation when you do this system is going to put this calculation first before it converts the number before it is going to convert it will check whatever the value is updated in direct quotation 1 multiplied by and then it will put the logic it will put the calculation to get your target currency similarly whatever you put in the indirect quotation it will do a 1 divided by if you put 22 system will automatically get 1 divided by 22 if you put this number here again system will convert 1 divided by this okay again system is going to put 1 divided by 22 so this should not happen so what you are going to do you are going to put calculation in such a way that your conversions are happening without any mistakes indirect and in the indirect you are going to maintain the same rate in real time before system is going to convert this whatever I have put star and then slash is taken care by the system 
if i put let's say let me minimize this let's say now this is fixed this conversion is aed to inr aed to inr according to us is direct quotation aed to inr is direct quotation what system is going to do it is going to take aed to inr rate is 22 so what system will do is equal to 1 multiplied by 22 is equal to 1 multiplied by 22 so what system is going to get it is 22 only so system will take 22 multiplied by what is your aed value 1000 1000 you are getting 22000 this 22000 will be inr this 22000 is inr second one for dollar it is inr to dollar inr to dollar is this one second one is not aed to dollar this is inr to dollar inr to dollar is here 80 this is updated in the indirect quotation so what system will do is equal to 1 divided by because inr to dollar inr to dollar is indirect quotation in indirect quotation you have put 80 1 divided by 80 it is getting 0 0.0125 so what it will do this multiplied by 22,000 INR you are going to get 275 dollars here okay third one is again INR to euro INR to euro is again not a direct quotation this is indirect quotation this is 95 before converting system will do 1 divided by 95 so system will come to know this is your actual rate I'll do a paste special and is equal to this number multiplied by INR 22,000 231.57 let's say 231.57 euro this is how system is going to convert the number and these calculations these conversions is what we have to understand at the beginning itself because when you post any entry right from the first document that you post in SAP the same logics are going to apply by the system and if you do not know how these numbers are getting calculated converted later on it is it will be a little tricky part because you have different functionalities called foreign currency valuation foreign currency translation exchange rate differences these points will come into picture if you are not clear on how currencies are getting converted or translated it will be difficult for us to understand the different other topics related to currency conversions yes Arya, you have a question yes uh, when you say like uh, if we consider like uh, um, i am creating foreign currency vendor group and there is multiple vendors uh, belongs to different countries in that scenario how will do it you need to be whatever to... the whatever the transaction that you do with your vendor in short mm -hmm. whatever you do with vendor is called as a transaction correct yeah you are purchasing from a vendor this purchase is a transaction when you are mm -hmm. purchasing from a vendor there will be no rule that you have if you are operating in us there is no mm -hmm. rule that you have to purchase only from a us vendor you can purchase from India vendor, you can purchase from Canada, Singapore, Dubai, Australia, Malaysia, anywhere. Your vendor may be sending you or selling you product from any part of the world. Agree? Yes. Now, wherever you are purchasing, you are going to call it as import. You are importing from a supplier. And when you are importing, you can import from any current, any country. When you are importing, you can import from any country based on that country from which you are importing your transaction currency will be updated here instead of aed if i am importing from canada i'll put cad here now in my exchange rate pairs i need to add the pairs according to canada also okay so you're saying like when i'm invoicing uh, posting the invoice that time i can control the currency according to the uh when you get right thank you yes Yes, Prashant. <coughs> sir, good evening. Uh, sir, yeah. my, uh, my question is, sir, as you uh, discussed that we have a four type of a currency, one is transactions, local, group, hard and index-based currency. Suppose if you have a requirement of like fifth one, 
for the gvp how no, there is a there is a huge there is a lot of disturbance prashant if you mind if you don't mind can you just talk a little louder sir is that fine right now yeah or better yeah thank you sir i am saying uh, you have mentioned that we have we are using four type of currency transaction local group or public index based currency my question is suppose if i have a requirement to get a report into the gbp currency so how we will map into the system to generate a report this is additional currency in which you wanted to submit the reports yes sir apart from your these three currencies you have something called freely definable currencies apart from this you have something called freely definable currencies you will update a freely definable currencies so here you will get freely definable currencies and you are going to update let's say freely definable currency now your this this becomes your freely definable currency number 1 i'll put this is freely definable currency number 2 or i simply put this this is also fixed if i put this as gbp gbp and assume that the rate is you need to update one more rate here you have to put gbp at the rate let's say 120 this is at 120 and you need to update currency here gbp to inr and inr to gbp same point here it is 1 multiplied by 120 and here also you are going to update same rate 120 system is going to convert any other currency you can again decide when you are converting gbp you have four currencies above this from which currency you want to convert it's a one time setting which you will inform to the system every time system is going to blindly convert from that logic this logic cannot be changed later on whatever the logic that you decide at the beginning same logic must be followed let's say this also you are going to convert from local currency if i put this also local currency i am going to update is equal to 1 divided by One divided by this one twenty. This will be the rate zero point zero eight 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 three. I'll put this number. I'll multiply this number with my INR twenty two thousand. What I get is one eighty three point three. I'll put one eighty three point three three GBP. Clear? Huh? Same logic. There will be no change in the logic. It's just just that we are adding additional currency. Same logic is implemented or used. okay sir okay and sir uh, my another question is like uh, the group currency which we have defined suppose we have defined the inr because it is a, a client level currency so suppose uh, like during the initial phase at the configuration we have defined uh, the group currency which is an inr which is equal to the local currency suppose later point of time we have come into the picture that we need a such currency in a suppose in the us currency so how can we achieve uh, this situation because as you told that once we have defined all the currency it will not change so how can we change or how can we get the report while creating a freely defined currency as you said or is there any kind of another yes case? you need to add the additional currency because what will happen according to your point let's say i have uh, month 1 and i have month 2 and i have month 3 assuming that in first month your group currency was inr sir aj we didn't we didn't catch the questions could you please repeat the question yeah his question is if you created group currency as inr at the beginning and later on you want to change from inr to dollar okay 
assuming that in the first month you have INR second month also you have INR in the third month or later on you decided that no you don't want group currency as INR you want to update this to dollar now what will happen for all the transactions in the first month in the second month in group currency whatever you have let's say this is 100 INR this is 200 INR now all of a sudden you want to change group currency from INR to dollar now when you do this perform when you perform this change assuming that you changed it and you got 300 dollar here now when i want to look at the report when i want to look at the report in group currency my group currency is not consistent correct huh? there is some inconsistency here absolutely sir yes absolutely so this inconsistency will not allow you to perform any report in group currency so that is why group currency is always maintained at client level all the company codes whatever you are configuring will share or will follow the same group currency group currency cannot be company code specific if you have any requirement which is company code specific either you have to use index based currency or hard currency or any other freely definable currency group currency is strictly for the consolidation purpose or for the group reporting purpose Okay. And okay, if sir. we have this kind of requirement, then we'll have to approach SAP how to deal with this. Because if we do something, we know that there is straight away data inconsistency in the table. Correct, sir. And posted transactions, we cannot amend. Once entry is posted, we cannot amend. If it is one or two transactions, you can reverse the entry, do something. But when we realize it later on, there may be thousands of entries. Correct, sir. So this cannot be changed later on. So all these points, that is why at the beginning of the project itself, we will be discussing with the client. Even if your client says, no, we are operating in uh, India only, we need INR only. You have to tell later on, if you want to switch, you cannot change this currency because it will lead to inconsistencies. Still your client says, yes, it's okay. We are fine with it. Then it is your client choice. But from our side, we have to give a heads up. We need to inform to the client. Later on, the same client will tell, nobody told us at the beginning, if you would have told me, would, we would not have chosen INR as a group currency, we would have opted dollar. Now they try to put it on our head, on the consulting team or project team that we were not aware of this, nobody told us this. Because sometimes your client will feel, no, we don't need dollar, why we need dollar, we don't require it. But in future, if you want to expand, this will become a showstopper. Correct, huh? correct sir correct so these points Absolutely. we will have to give a heads up as a consulting because your client your user your customer is not aware of these points these functionalities these challenges which are going to come up in the future if you put your initial settings in an incorrect way as a consultant since you are aware of the challenges the changes that are not possible later on once you set up it is our responsibility to inform the client and then take a written confirmation that we do not want group currency as INR. We understand that these are the challenges, but we will proceed with INR only. Some clients, they say that they know that they are going to operate only in that respective country. If you are operating in India, they know that they have no plans to establish any business in any other country. Even if they say we will establish it, we will still follow INR as group currency. Then it is fine. But in case if you want to change, group currency is not the option. You have to opt another currency. You have up to 10 currencies functionality in S4 HANA. Yeah. You'll have to choose correct, correct, any sir. other currency to meet the reporting requirement, but not the group currency. Okay. Okay, sir. Clear? Huh? And yeah, absolutely. Sir. Thank you. And sir, uh, like uh, my uh, now my question is for the exchange point of view like whatever you have said i understood all these things but my concern is like uh, from the exchange rate point of view we have maintained it is just a, like a mathematics like if we are doing a direct quotation it is a multiplier if it is an indirect quotation we will divide it the figures why sap has introduced a direct or indirect like it's a mathematics suppose if we are using for example if one uh, uh, one usd is equal to 80 inr so suppose if in, a, if in SAP we have maintained one USD is equal to 80 INR, if suppose if there is any kind of a requirement that we have to be uh, maintain the report in the INR, 
so system should but, uh, automatically convert into the INR itself by dividing. Like my question is why SAP has introduced direct or indirect? Because what is the purpose? You know that the because you know that in the system there are two rates or even from the exchange rate. Let's say I am talking about the same currency. If I talk about dollar, I am talking about AT. Now I have to specifically mention how this AT is converted. I cannot give you one rupee and then I cannot ask you to give eighty dollar. Correct? Huh? Yeah, correct, sir. And I can give you one dollar. I can ask you eighty rupees. Now this eighty has got two different meanings. Uh, correct, sir. Right now, eighty has got two different meanings, and then we have to clearly specify what exactly you mean by eighty. Whether you are asking me to multiply eighty or you are asking me to divide it by eighty, this SAP cannot interpret because when you know that it has got two ways of usage, you need to specifically mention according to system's understanding. Let me go to exchange rate screen. If I go to OB zero eight. Now, if I add any exchange rate here, let's say I'll put from currency dollar and I'll put two currencies INR. Now, on the other side, I'll put INR and then dollar. Whenever you're talking about exchange rate, this is what we mean by currency pair. Clear? When you talk about currency pair, this is what you mean. Dollar to INR, INR to dollar. Now here you have two points. Point number one, direct quotation. Yes. Point number two, indirect quotation. If you are putting 80 here, and if you are putting 80 here, so you cannot put 80 at both positions. Either you have to maintain direct quotation or you have to maintain indirect quotation. If you put 80 here, whatever is there in the direct quotation, system is going to straight away do a multiplication. Your currency multiplied by this direct quotation will be the target currency. Clear? Okay, yes, sir. Now, on the other side, if I put 80 in the indirect quotation, it will not multiply. It will do one divided by indirect quotation multiplied by your source currency. Okay. Now, to to show you this practically, let me put exchange rate type M. I'll say this is valid from current date. I'll select today's date, 19. And I'll say dollar to INR according to our example. What it is? 80. 80, sir. And 80 is direct quotation. Correct? Huh? Absolutely, sir. I'll put 80. And in the same example. INR to dollar is also 80, but in the indirect quotation. Agree? Agree, sir. Now I'll go to INR to dollar. I'll put this in the indirect quotation. Now for both, I am updating the same rate 80, 80, but once in the direct yes. quotation, on the other side in the indirect quotation. Let me save this. Now this is updated. Let me simulate this. How this is going to work? For the exchange rate simulation, you have to use a transaction called EWCT. If I go to EWCT, I need to give my currency. Let's say I want to convert dollar from INR first, USD to INR. Clear? Okay. Enter. Now I need to give the date on what on which I want to convert. Convert on today, 1908. Let me press enter. Now on today. According to system, the valid exchange rate is 80. Is there any star slash before 80 or it's just 80? Sir, it's just 80. If it is just 80, it is multiplication. In short, direct quotation. I'll put my source amount. My source amount, let's say 275 USD. 275 dollar. When I put 275 dollar, I am expecting 22,000 INR. Correct? No. Yeah, 22,000 INR. Let me put 275 dollars. Is equal into to how much INR? Absolutely, 22,000 sir. INR. 22,000. Is this clear, everyone? Okay, sir. 
now next one let me test this the other way around let me put inr2 dollar according to inr2 dollar as on today's date let me change this i'll press enter when i press enter what is this 80 now just 80 or slash 80 uh, sir, slash 80 slash 80 what system is going to do it is going to take 1 divided by 80 multiplied by your source value what is your inr 22000 sir 22000 now i'll put 22000 what is your dollar 275 now how system is picking these numbers because of this exchange rate this is nothing but your currency pair this is how you need to update if i put Correct. for example if i put let's say 80 in the direct quotation also i don't know that i am confused where to put 80 i put because dollar i put 80 inr also i put 80 if i put 80 here and then if i try to convert it what system will do is incorrect correct it will give me a huge inr number huge dollar absolutely so that will be incorrect so these points we need to understand and okay. system is going to convert based on what is updated in the database if you have not updated something or if you update exchange rate incorrectly what you get from the system is also incorrect so whatever you input the same thing will be taken by the system to give you the output if our input exchange rate calculation conversion itself is wrong whatever is coming whatever system is doing is wrong because what we are feeding to the system is wrong especially if you are not clear on this part or if you do not explain these points clearly to the user because this is something which is updated by the user on a monthly basis end user if they put wrong exchange rate or if they get confused instead of direct they put in indirect what system will do any transaction that you do everything will go wrong correct sir now at the time of a transaction user is not going to look at what is dollar whether it is calculated correctly or not because all these numbers are automatically updated by the system when we know the number is auto updated by, uh, auto updated by the system user or your client is under an impression that numbers are getting converted properly they don't think that sap also will do mistake right okay okay clear huh? Clear, clear. Sir, but uh, just one more thing. Uh, please uh, clarify one more time the spot and the ME, MER month and exchange rate. Please explain one more time. Yeah, I'll explain it. So in the in the further topics, I'll explain it today. Okay. Yeah. Sir, one question on that yes, transaction. Sir, yes. Uh, where you where you were maintaining the direct indirect quotation um what is the purpose i mean uh, I, say for a i think this is this will be maintained by the consultant right not by the end user or maybe end user can. end user end user right so what is the purpose of having both direct and indirect quotation in the same row where you are actually supposed to maintain one at like one column at a time let's say if i put only one you mean to say if i put only this row this is not relevant is that what you want to say no no in the same row let's say okay. the one that you have usd to inr 80, 80. and you have 8080 80 both in and no what is, i'm saying is this what you so by mistake if you put the same 18 both direct and indirect quotation in the same row okay what will happen yeah i mean why will why is sap keeping so confused conf to the end user <laughs> is my question yeah because it it is a two way a two way mm -hmm. when i say if i if i am converting that one divided by 80 mm -hmm. i know that inr rate is not inr to dollar is not 80 inr to dollar is always one divided by 80 this is your mm -hmm. dollar rate correct huh? from inr mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you want to put direct quotation you are supposed to put this number here if you want to update inr you put this then your inr is valid if 
you wanted to put you can put this this is valid otherwise you put 80 here so that this conversion system will take care of mm -hmm. if you are so, converting so the exact uh, conversion you put it in direct quotation so that system will multiply otherwise you put it in the indirect quotation same rate system will take care of this conversion and it will give you the correct exchange differences conversions I, yeah i understood that sir my question was let's say now you put on the second row you have put a, a value on the direct quotation column right the right. system should not allow you to put something in the indirect quotation value again right for the same row so since no, you this have is the currency put... pair is different. This is dollar to INR. This is INR to dollar. The pair is different. Correct. Yeah, yeah, I understood. But I'm saying in the same row, hmm. let, like in the same row, let's say you have USD to INR and you have maintained 80 under direct quotation, right? That column. Correct. But say by yeah. mistake, the end user also maintained that 80 under the indirect quotation column on the first row. System okay. should not yeah. allow it, right? Yeah, exactly. Will it yeah. allow or will it? Because it doesn't it will make allow. sense. Okay. It will allow. So how? But that is why mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. these uh, kind of queries, we use a term called user discipline. Okay. And and when you talk about user discipline, as a consultant, what we are going to do during the system handover to the system, your client, mm -hmm. you are going to have the testing, like how system is going to test. Okay. Now, whenever you are doing the testing, you have positive testing, you have negative testing. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to positive testing, you are going to show your client or your user. If you put 80, this is how system is going to bring the number. And mm -hmm. by mistakenly, if you put 80 here. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say if you put 80 here, you will open this exchange rate simulator. You will show your client. If I put 80 okay. there, if I put my currency here, this is how number comes. Your entries will get wrong, which means whoever is updating this exchange rate normally in your client there is something called a treasury department a treasury team or the team who is taking care of bank related transactions yeah cash yeah right yeah this treasury team is responsible for updating this exchange rate they are mm -hmm. aware of on what basis they are going to convert because they will be trained they will be trained and they will also have a user manual if you are converting from local currency to dollar currency, where to update? Your user manual contains or you will clearly highlight in the user manual, you need to update exchange rate in the direct quotation in case of foreign currency to local currency and in case of local currency to foreign currency, you need to update the rate in indirect quotation. Now, okay. in the user manual that we have given to the user, it clearly states where to update. Mm -hmm. Now, still, if your user had made a mistake, then this is called as a user fault. Then as a consultant, we will try to resolve the problem. And you have to tell that this is the training gap or user had maintained at the incorrect position. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the some corrective measures that are to be taken from the client side. Either they will ask our users are new, the old users have left, the new users mm -hmm. are not clear with how to maintain. Please initiate one training session. So they will request for a training session. Probably you will initiate maybe 15, 20 minute training session meeting invite. You will explain them how to create this exchange rates. Mm -hmm. And also you will prepare one more user manual. If it is already there, it is not clear. You will prepare a detailed user manual and then circulate it to the client. Then they will send it to the respective team who is responsible for maintaining this exchange rate. Okay. Clear? Because on yeah. the SAP in general, whatever the screen that we see it, this is not specific to any particular client. This right. is common screen for all the customers across the globe. Because one customer may say that, no, I don't want direct quotation. We will convert and then update here. Then we will tell them that you update direct quotation point 0.1250. If you don't want this, you put 80 here. Mm -hmm. Because one client wants this way, the other client wants the other way around right. now from the sap point of view they want to meet the requirement of both the clients if your requirement is to use direct please use direct quotation if your requirement is to use indirect please use indirect quotation but this is the prerequisite this is the checklist you need to follow 
to update this particular functionality this as a consultant we have to train the user we have to prepare the manual if required if your user is asking or your client is asking things may go wrong here you may need to put some validations you have something called right. validations right yeah so those validations will come into picture yeah yeah i totally agree i the, the questions that i hear from my client is in this situation uh, they will ask the moment the user is uh, entering a value in a particular column let's say direct quotation the automatically the system should gray out or disable the indirect quotation column on that particular record <laughs> that kind of requirement they will ask so that there is no user in, in, uh, or trying to avoid the user error situation right so But, in this kind of requirement the point number 1 in standard it will not allow this okay you need to customize this you need to customize it in the sense you need to put a custom validation whenever your from currency is your local currency hmm. now how you are going to define this now that is not a valid requirement because there is no company code here correct okay yep i see now if i am working for a company code for example uh if i am working i don't have any okay if i am working for india company code and if i am working for us company code if i am working for singapore company code according to india mm -hmm. the logic whatever indian user is telling is valid correct mm -hmm. the same requirement yes. when you see it from usa company code this is invalid he will not agree to you right agree Yeah. the same requirement for singapore it is not valid because when you maintain exchange rate this is maintained at client level if you maintain it from india the same rate is applicable for us company code same rate is applicable for every company code because while maintaining it there is no company or there is no company code assignment mm. system is only going to look at the currency pair okay and wherever yeah. you have multiple what you say the the currencies not everybody will be authorized to update this correct because as you said there may be some different opinions right there may be some different opinions to overcome this different opinions you have another option you don't want this to be updated while posting the transaction also you can update the exchange rate let's say i am posting a transaction i don't want this you can put the currency conversion rate here manually if you put manually this rate is used if you don't put manually here it will take your system converted exchange rate or whatever you updated in the back end got it clear yeah yeah thank you so much sir. as you said you will get different users you will get different clients who will ask you requirements in a different way yeah so as a consultant we have to understand the requirement because from their point of view it's a pain point for them Right. They'll tell that we see it from SAP point of view. We upfront tell no, this is not possible. The moment you tell no, this is not possible. No user will be happy with you. Yeah. Everybody will tell negative about you. No, you don't ask this consultant anything. For everything, he will tell not possible, not standard, and all. Yeah. But instead, you take the requirement. Okay, tell me what is your requirement. Sit with sit with the user. Just have a two minute conversation. Ask them. Okay, why you wanted to do like this? you tell slowly that in general this is not possible in sap but we will give a try if we can do something to meet your requirement then you will not do nothing because you know this is not possible but if you tell upfront your client will not feel happy correct yes absolutely you will take one or two days you will tell that we tried our level best and then you will tell that no but there is no option there is no possibility and we also checked with other clients other customers that we implemented for nowhere nobody is using like this everybody is following this even sap also recommends this modifications their validations are not to be kept and then you will put one some email or on the email you will write because of these reasons this is not recommended to do it when you tell that this is not recommended by sap this is not a standard uh, functionality to amend please advise if you still want to do it then your client will tell no 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 if it is not standard if it is not recommended by sap also we don't want the person who said i want this will start writing to you no we don't want yeah. is That's telling true. we want because we are not telling them the pros and cons of it or you are not explaining them in such a way in which they will get convinced and you should also okay. see at 
at what level you are getting the requirement sometimes let's say your end user will give you the requirement you don't have to discuss you don't have to argue with your end user he has got nothing to take any decision on the business process correct mm -hmm. yeah. and then you'll have to talk to, to to the right person who is authorized to confirm for you to make changes in the system then you will tell that we got a requirement from the so and so department users that this has to be updated like this then they will tell, they will discuss internally why this is required and all because any changes that you are doing will have or will attract some additional cost to the client yeah right so they will tell that no we don't want they will tell the users no you have to do like this only they'll tell that to get this functionality implemented we need to incur additional cost we have not budgeted this this year we'll try next year we'll try to budget to add additional functionality next year because if your user is asking you to introduce any new functionality or put any new functionality based on that you are going to charge it to them if it is a small small one you will put them as support tickets or incidents if it's a, a little kind of big one you will give a different effort estimation you will say that this is going to take one month and we will be charging this much for this functionality Clear, right? Exactly. So I, I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Purushottam. Yes. Uh, hello, uh, sir. Uh, my question is that how many currencies can we configure for company code other than this three? Maximum ten. Maximum Total ten. Code. You cannot exceed ten. In ECC, you cannot exceed three. In HANA, you cannot exceed ten. Okay, but maximum we will use local currency, group currency only. We don't even use the third currency that is used only in selected countries. Otherwise, you will be using only two currencies, local currency, group currency. Third, third one, which is your index based currency, hard currency is also rarely used by customers. Otherwise, only two. These two are mandatory for every client most of the times, but this is optional from here onwards. It is purely optional based on the client you may see you may not be able to see and if you see typical local companies when i said typical local companies let's say a company in india will operate only in india they have only one legal legal entity or they have no plans of expanding into any other countries they will tell that we don't need any currency we need only local currency so you may have a company which is dealing only with a single currency also Okay. But uh, if you understand, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, okay, I get it. Uh, my another question is that if I have five company codes uh, and I want a reporting for uh, group reporting for every company code in another currency, it's different currency. Maybe it's uh, uh, same as a local currency. Maybe can it possible? Now repeat your question again. Sorry, I missed your point. You have five company codes. Five company codes. Every company code has uh, want to be uh, generate the reports in in different group group currency. Can it be possible, or shall I maintain group currency for uh, all five company code as a one? Group currency is maintained at client level. When I say group currency is maintained at client level. So when we talk about client, whenever you try to log into SAP, here you will get the client number, correct? Okay. So now all your five company codes are inside the same system. Yes. Now all the five company codes are working under same client. Yes. Now if I go to client, let's say, <clears throat> if I go to client. Now this client which we are using is 800 for client 800 whatever currency that you update all the company codes in this client will share or will will use dollar as the group currency so if you change the currency here this will affect all your company codes okay for specific company code if you have a different reporting requirement that is where your hard currency or indexed based currency or any other freely definable currency will come into picture. Okay. 
clear na yes, yes. thank you yeah hello yes, sir yes sir yes sir yes dinesh sir i have two questions can i ask before that let me uh, go by the people who already raised their hand okay Yes, go ahead. Those who raised their your hands can go ahead. My question I, is, my question is, sorry. No, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. My question is, if we have posters in the system already, and um, the client not uh, decides that uh, they want to change the currency, not. Um, not at the uh, group currency. Say, for instance, uh, the, um, they already have transactions posted in their uh, company code currency, and uh, for some reason they decide that um, they want to change the exchange rates um, for transactions that have already been posted. If we change the exchange rate, can the Past posters been uh, recalculated in the reports. For that, there is a functionality called foreign currency valuation and foreign currency translation. But the posted number will not be affected, will not be changed. The difference between the posted number and a new exchange rate number, new exchange rate at the month end, will be converted and it will be posted as. Realized exchange risk, exchange loss or gain, or unrealized exchange loss or gain. What is his question actually, uh, uh, Jay? My question if the entries was, are already. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, but if, uh, say, say for instance, we have a direct, um, a direct quotation for, let's say. Um, as, as an example, one dollar, and in the system we have uh, transactions posted for that um, quotation, and maybe a month later they come up and say that oh, you know, it was wrong, was a mistake. Can you change it? If we change it, is it going to change the prior posted uh, transactions or? Yeah. It will not change. Uh, yeah. Continue, continue. No, I think, okay. I'll, I'll please go ahead. I think you you. Are... Yeah, once got... you post a transaction, later on, if you wanted to, if you realized that exchange rate was incorrect, point number one, when you update the exchange rate later on, it will not reflect the prior postings. Whatever is posted before, they will remain as it is with the incorrect exchange rate. So okay. what you need to do, you need to cancel that document and then repost again. When you say cancel, you mean reverse? Yes, you need to reverse it and you need to repost it again. While reposting, you need to make sure that on that particular date, whether we have updated the currency or not. If you have updated the currency, you can directly repost it. If not, you need to manually put exchange rate while posting any transaction. You can manually input the exchange rate. Like when you post any document, you can manually input the rate. So with this rate, it will post the revised entry. Hello. I didn't catch that. I didn't understand. Um that place you've you not got it yes okay so his question was let's say i already posted a document at the time of posting my document i realized that exchange rate is 80 but later on i noticed that this is not 80 this is 81 now i have gone and then updated the rate from 80 to 81 but by the time i updated 81 some entries are already posted Okay, when I update this 80 to 81, will system recalculate my posted document exchange rates or not? So it will not recalculate. You have to 
cancel the documents and then repost when system rate is 81 or you need to post them again manually giving exchange rate is 81 Yeah, we need to reverse the existing document in the post the new one with the updated currency rate, right? Correct. Got it. If it is multiple documents having like uh, maybe uh, more than thousand, if what what will have to do, sir? We cannot Same do thing. reverse every document, right? Maybe client will not yeah. accept, right? Yeah, what they will do, they will say that what is the overall impact that is, that is, uh, you know, cost and they have to split the impact according to the nature of account. There are certain accounts, let's say your vendor, customer, bank related transactions, which are subject to clearing in future. Mm, yes. Right. So these kind of accounts you have to reverse no other code, but there are certain accounts which are not subject to clearing like your PNL accounts or your non open item related GL accounts. Once it is posted, it will stay as it is for these kind of accounts. You can pass a manual entry to adjust the exchange rate, whatever is additionally posted or posted incorrectly, whatever the overstated amount or uh, you know, the low stated amount, the differential or the Delta posting you can pass. Oh, I, I have one question. So here we are taking group currency as a USD. So right, sir. So total SAP has given 10 currencies. So in the five, if I suppose five company codes having, we have to generate group current group reporting as a USD level. So what is the use of freely defined level currency levels? We can take any currency level in the group report also, right? It is specific to but the country level. But this freely definable for specific to company code level. Let's say you have five company ah. codes. One got company yeah, code I'll is telling that. Got I it? have also same in the mind. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because whatever you have local currency, group currency, and then hard indexed based currency, these are common currencies. If you change this currency, it will affect the other company code also. Whatever is falling under same category, same line. So if you want a currency which will not affect the anybody else, then you need to go for the freely definable currencies. Okay. Yeah. Arya, you had a question? Yeah, one sec. Yeah, actually, I was. Uh, that is the question. Like he, he, you answered right now. The freely definable currency. So you creating on company code level, because I was right. thinking like when using like transaction currency as a variable. So why you need like a freely definable currency? Or that like save one extra. They came with save one currencies. That's my question actually, because in right. transaction currency you can. That's a variable. So uh it's uh we can convert any currency over there but this is freely definable currency the answer is you saying it's uh, according to the company you can change it all right so another point company. at the transaction currency level there is no report mm -hmm. in sap when you talk about any report let's say any financial report when we talk about financial report when you take any trial balance, any ledger balances, PNL, any financial report that you prepare, you will be preparing either at local currency level, group currency level, hard currency level. No report is prepared at transaction currency level. As we know, transaction currency is not fixed. So when you generate the report at a transaction currency level, currencies are not common. No, that's not common currency. So when currencies are not common, we cannot prepare any report because in the report, you are going to do a total debit, total credit, debit minus credit, balancing figure. Correct? Yes. This is not possible if you follow transaction currency or document currency. That is why document currency is only the base currency for deriving your actual currencies, which are going to be used in your reporting. So why you need to be use transaction currency if it's not possible to uh, because as per like, accounting standards, you have to record the transaction in the original currency. If you are doing the transaction in dollar, you must represent the transaction in dollar only. If you record 
dollar transaction in local currency your auditor will not approve your financials so it, it means that you are manipulating your financials so in this scenario so, id and rand up and this uh, then freely definable currency like when you saying that you can't do the show the reports on the transaction currency uh, so when you really definable that, currency is, sure, is huh? similar to freely definable currency is a similar to your local currency group currency hard currency this will be a dedicated currency at your company okay. code level and at that level oh, it will convert currency. all that yeah it's a dedicated currency it will convert the number every time same like oh, group hard currency okay i got it that is like you can define uh, up to seven currencies extras correct, yeah, i correct. got it so you saying this is like a fixed currency fixed currency only transaction yeah. is variable rest and all fixed currencies okay got it thank you yeah so ajay in what case do we need um fixed current uh, freely definable currency in what case like when when do a company want to um maybe need their uh, freely de definable currency let's say they are currently reporting in us dollar they are also currently reporting in inr and then euro or gbp but they have any specific local reporting or they want to uh, fi find out or they want to use another accounting principle also for the internal purpose then they may need another reporting currency let's assume that they want to also find finalize the reports in canadian dollars this is only for the internal reporting purpose so in that case they want to have all the transactions that they are doing to reflect in canadian dollar also so what you are going to do you will add another freely definable currency which will be canadian dollar and you will put a logic how you want system to derive your canadian dollar based on local currency based on group currency based on hard currency so once you define this setting whenever you post any document it will automatically convert to canadian dollar and you can generate all your reports in canadian dollars okay but majoritally we don't use this freely definable currencies these are the options provided by sap but not used by most of the clients their reporting requirement is satisfied by local and group currency very rare you will see hard index based currencies freely definable currencies okay yes dinesh go ahead yeah Thank you. Uh, sir, I have four questions uh, listed down from, uh, I think, from the past class, uh, from the uh, last last week's class. First one okay. is that, sir, when we have, uh, like, uh, in the leading and non-leading ledger concept, we have a leading ledger, which represents as uh, the group financial report. Right, sir, leading ledger. Right. So, uh, since we can have the group uh, balance sheet and the PNL using the leading ledger, so sir, why do we need BPC for? Is like consolidation is different uh, than the group reporting. You couldn't understand this. Why so normally, what will BPC happen if... from the company code, from the company code in SAP, what you will generate is only company code level reporting. If you are talking about uh, India company code from SAP, you will be able to generate only India company code report. And if you want to generate a consolidated report, consolidated report is nothing but combination or combining all company codes data into one, one format. Correct? Huh? Yes. You are simply going to add company code one number plus company code two number, company code three number based on number of company codes. All the numbers are added and then you will represent as consolidated sales consolidated purchases consolidated liabilities consolidated profit for this to do it is a complex activity in sap when i say it is complex activity in sap you have to define group chart of account and when you have more number of transactions the runtime that system will take to give the output is more the moment you click on the system you want to get the report correct if you look at some reports even when you click it will take some time Yes, sir. So, mean to say, when we talk about the IFRS uh, group level balance sheet, is this not the consolidation, the like leading ledger level balance sheet if we have? 
no this, this is, is not this the is consolidation okay this is used for consolidation for consolidation what do i need let's say you are consolidating the total financials for a company and we are five company codes clear yeah yeah we are five company codes you are the one who is sitting in the corporate office consolidating now you will request person from company code 1 2 3 4 5 to share the financials on a particular date so that you can start consolidation agree yeah now you are dependent on data from the five different uh, people who are working on five different company codes let's say i am working in india company code and you are working in a corporate office maybe us or any other singapore country and you have given a deadline or there is a policy that every month by 5th the financials must be submitted for the consolidation now when you are expecting are you expecting the data from me according to company indian companies act in inr figure or according to ifrs dollar figure what do you want for your consolidation consolidation uh, would be as hold on, per, uh, hold on let me write here just just a minute i'll put it here yeah let's say i have india us sir yeah. sir you understood question right my main main uh, confusion between ifrs group level reporting a difference between the group level reporting and the bpc that is the main question. yeah that's what i'm writing here okay. in india you have local group everywhere you have two reports correct yeah yes the no. local and one ifrs you have sap reporting you have bpc reporting correct yeah sap reporting is your local reporting bpc reporting is your group reporting so this is if i take india company code for SAP reporting in short for local reporting in India I need data in INR as per Indian accounting standard agree yes now let's say for US I need data in dollar based on US cap agree yes similarly if I take BPC reporting in BPC reporting from India I don't want INR figure I want a dollar figure I don't want IAS figure, I want IFRS figure. Correct? Okay. Now from US also same thing. Now when you generate this report, here while generating the report, you have to select ledger, you have to select currency. Here also you have to select ledger and currency. If your requirement is for preparing report for local authorities as per Indian accounting standard, you will be selecting ledger which is representing Indian accounting standard or Indian accounting principle and then currency as Indian currency INR, local currency. For you to submit the data for corporate for consolidation purpose, you will be selecting the different ledger, your currency will be different. The way that you are extracting the data is different for consolidation purpose for BPC and for local reporting purpose in the local authorities yeah both the records or both the reports are available in your sap only but consolidation you are not doing in sap consolidation is going to take place in bpc correct yes yeah. and bpc will not have any transaction data bpc will read the transactions from your sap so when bpc is reading a transaction yeah. from sap bpc will extract the data from specific ledger and the specific currency now bpc consolidation is based on ifrs yeah now for ifrs you have decided leading ledger 0l yes now for consolidation you have decided group currency dollar yes uh, it is same as bpc and uh, ifrs all right correct let's say if i look at any report for example for any report that you generate you have two points point number one ledger if you want 
IFRS ledger, according to our example, you have to give 0L. 0L will give you the data from IFRS accounting principle. Clear? Huh? Yes. IFRS you are using for what reporting, local or group? Group reporting. For group reporting, are you following INR or dollar? Dollar. Dollar is local currency or group currency? It's group currency. So you will have an option here. Group currency. You can see currency number 30 group. Mm, yes. When you put this combination 30 0 L, this is used for consolidation purpose. And on the other side, if I wanted to for submit my reports, if I wanted to analyze my reports as per Indian accounting standard for Indian accounting standards, you may be using local gap, which is Indian accounting standard non leading ledger. Non leading ledger is not zero. L. Let's say it is uh, NL. NL is non leading ledger. Non leading ledger Indian accounting standard. You need data in which currency? Uh, INR company code currency. INR is your company code currency. If you put combination yes, 10 yes. NL, this is your local reporting data. If you put combination 30 0 L, this is your IFRS data. Yeah. And when you are submitting the data for consolidation, BPC will extract data with this combination 30 and 0 L. This combination data will be extracted by BPC from SAP. At the end of the yeah. month. So here, on a... Yeah, go yes, ahead, go ahead. Here is the question actually. Uh, when I'm saying with the combination 30 and 0 L, I'm already having the report, my financial statement in SAP. Why do I need the BPC? So I am not able to understand the difference uh, between the BPC report and uh, 30 and 0 L report here in this screen. Okay. Because so uh, what is my understanding is, yeah, my understanding is if I'm having the uh, leading ledger level report, which is a uh, which is a consolidated report of all the company codes, right? If I have five company codes, because leading ledger is by default ledger for them. And this is the IFRS uh, for group level we are using. So my understanding is that we already have the group level reporting here. So why BPC? Let's say when you post any transaction. If you wanted to post any transaction, your transaction is always company code specific. Yes. Now data of a particular company code is different from the data of the other company code, correct? Uh, yes. Sir. Now, if I have five company codes, for example, data in five company codes are completely different, not related to each other. Agree? Correct. Yes. Now, in each company code, there may be huge data. And according to your consolidation or according to your consolidate consolidation or group reporting, you may have different format. You may have different points to be considered. Now these points, these group, yeah. group reporting and consolidated reporting logics are not possible to implement in SAP because of complex formulas. Because you want to club four or five GL accounts into one GL account and you want to combine three, four profit centers into one profit center. It's as simple as like you take the total data, you play with pivot table. You know, in Excel sheet, when you have the data dump, you can play with the pivot table according to your requirement. Agree? In any dimension, you can show the data in multiple uh, formats, multiple combinations. Yes. All these combinations are possible in BPC, not in SAP. Mm -hmm. So at uh, zero level financial statement, which we have, which is uh, kind of simple uh, report we can have we can have balanced uh, asset liability side what is there and accumulated of all the company codes in the simple format uh, based on the financial statement version we can have but in bpc there is uh, uh, more possibility uh, right at the Correct. deep level reporting uh, dimensions we can have okay bpc is more or less like your excel sheet the way you look at your excel sheet when you log into bpc you will find excel sheet only because bpc is all about xml excel excel sheet only BPC will not yeah. look like any application, any tool. It is a pure Excel sheet. 
based on the bpc mapping understood right yes sir i will ask my second question sir yes go ahead sir like i am using the five yeah i am using five company codes in five different countries so the question is that um since i want to have the single controlling area so definitely i have to have the single fiscal year variant for all the company codes and i will have uh, one leading ledger and four non leading ledgers <clears throat> so sir my question is uh, uh, which fiscal year should i have uh, for like leading ledger should i can i have the uh, fiscal year which is i'm um, using for india or us uh, which one when you are talking have, about like, uh, the, when you are talking about this point you are representing controlling area correct huh? five company codes and one controlling area yeah five yeah uh, but main question is about leading and non leading ledgers which one uh, for like uh, uh, leading ledger for uh, for which country i should consider the leading ledger i i say okay it is for ifrs but uh, at company code level we have to have the single uh, fiscal year variant right we will have the different fiscal year variant at our non leading ledgers right so i have five company no. codes so i have five fiscal year variants but which uh, variant i should use at company code level so that uh, that becomes my leading ledger uh, fiscal year variant should i have it company code uh, i'm using at india uh, so that variant should i use v3 or should i use k4 and my group currency is usd at client level so i want to i want to have ifrs obviously in uh, group currency because the 30 is defined at the client level but can i have for india itself uh, um at india level like v3 i will assign uh variant it is clear variant so at leading ledger level can i have v3 i mean okay, uh, i got your point to let me list out this here let me list out this this is actually straight forward when you talk about yeah. controlling area okay so you have two options here when you talk about controlling area you have two options option number 1 common for all company codes option number 2 separate for each company code okay so majoritely we will be using this option in real time you will not be working with separate you will always go with common controlling area if you are going with this you need to have common chart of account again you have to be very specific common operating chart of account and common fiscal year now controlling area always refers to leading ledger controlling area oh, okay. always refers to leading ledger and anything we assign directly to leading ledger will represent directly assigned to company code yes. will represent leading ledger clear yes sir yeah all right just let me take other questions and then i'll come back to you okay yes ivan you have a question yes sir um my question is when it comes to the um, exchange rate if we do not maintain um uh, the pair a pair what would be the impact let's say we just exchange we just maintain just one um one exchange rate from let's say from inr to a foreign currency what would be the impact if we do not maintain a pair if you do not maintain the pair system will not convert that exchange rate so it will throw an error that from this currency to this currency there is no record it will give an error okay 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 
okay so whatever the currency that you key in will be the source currency currency and whatever you are expecting will be the target currency from source to target there must be a record like inr to dollar dollar to inr okay 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 thank you hello hello yes yes Sir. jyoti prakash go ahead now let me go in sequence you put please raise your hand then i'll go in sequence so that i don't miss any questions and then you don't have to wait for your turn yeah yes sir so my question is uh, if i have five different vendors operating in five different foreign currencies or five different transaction currencies then uh, while posting a voucher or a purchase voucher is there a option for selecting transaction currency or how the posting of a voucher is done sir in sap you're talking with respect to purchase yeah purchase purchase Because through purchase, purchase order or we have transaction currency then we have to convert it to local currency right correct uh -huh. in that respect i am asking sir so whenever you purchase anything from any supplier let's say you are going to place the order correct huh? which is nothing but po or purchase order sir right you are going to raise a purchase order yes sir and when you raise the purchase order your purchase order contains a currency which is nothing but order currency or po currency okay this order currency or po currency will represent your transaction currency or document currency from there the other currencies will get derived uh, so it will be automatically mapped right no when while creating the purchase order you have to manually feed purchase order currency otherwise it will take your purchase order currency or the default currency which is updated in the vendor master okay sir so that purchase order is done means uh, that uh, voucher is entered by whom sir sap fico consultant or yes, logistics sorry. purchase logistics. order will not create any transaction any accounting entry but when you are creating purchase order let's say you are trying to import something from singapore you are placing mm -hmm. an order from singapore when you place the order in singapore or in short if you wanted to buy anything from singapore when you go to any website in singapore from india or from any other country all the products prices are listed in singapore dollar correct yes sir and when you click on the purchase and then that company will give you the bill in singapore dollar yes sir and when you are accounting it you have to account it in singapore dollar and then you need to convert the singapore dollar into equivalent inr this is mandatory Uh, a rule in every country as per every accounting principle transaction must be recorded in the source currency or original currency and then you need to show the conversion while showing the conversion you should also show at what rate you are converting and you are also supposed to produce the proof that this is the valid exchange rate on this particular date otherwise you will take the benefit of exchange rate gains and losses incorrectly yes sir so all these points are validated and all these points are subject to audit hmm. so this hmm. this becomes a statutory uh, requirement or the legal requirement in every organization according to every accounting principle so nobody is exception to it no country no company hmm. so sir after uh, purchase order is done so like when we uh, as a fico end user when he uh, enters the voucher then automatically that uh, for example singapore dollar will be converted to inr yeah same point here whatever the currency that you are updating here that will act like your transaction currency is yes, a transaction currency here in this example is uh, singapore dollar uh, anything uh, Let, this can be anything if it is a singapore anything. dollar you you have to update the respective exchange rates in the system okay okay normally from your client side they are aware that based on their history based on the historical data they know that we are dealing with the 10 different countries and they know that we are dealing with around 15 currencies for all these 15 currencies they will tell that this is the exchange rate from this currency to the other currency all these exchange rates they will update in the system on a monthly basis clear yes sir yeah 
All right. Any other questions? Hi, sir. Hello. Yeah. Yes. Sir, this is relating to entering uh, this uh, exchange rate, sir. Uh, for every uh, pair, we have to enter uh, direct quotation and also indirect quotation, or uh, we can enter only one quotation, then the uh, system will convert uh, into indirect quotation like that. No. If you maintain only direct quotation, system will take only direct quotation. If you take indirect quotation, it will take only indirect quotation. It will work only when you take both. Okay, Let's say if I update. Both. Huh. Let's say if I updated AED to INR, this 22, and this is not updated. Okay. And when I try to record a transaction in INR, I want this entry to get converted into AED. System will not convert because this combination is not maintained. Okay. For every pair, we have to maintain two, both direct and indirect. Two, two. Yes. Whether you use it or you don't use it, you have to maintain two. Okay. In that case, can, can you go to that screen, sir, and uh, entering uh, this? Okay. So here, uh, instead of uh, uh, two rows, can I enter the uh, for first row uh, indirect quotation as 0 0.0125? Uh, direct quotation is 880 and uh, indirect quotation no. is 0 0.125. Here it is currencies are maintained. This is dollar to INR. It will consider from dollar to INR. Source currency is dollar, target is INR. And on the other okay. side, this is ULTA, reverse. This is INR to dollar. So both are not same. Both are different. Okay. Okay. When you are updating any transaction, for example, hmm. while recording any transaction, you have currency option here. Yes, sir. Correct. Huh? If I put a dollar here, system is going to take this from currency. If I put INR here, system is going to take the second one, which is INR this. So system will decide whether to take this or this based on the source currency that you are giving. Okay. Clear? Uh, hi. Okay, sir. Hello. Yes. Actually, this uh, exchange rates will be updated by Treasury team, right, sir? Mostly, which uh, the site exchange rate, how they will, uh, which site they will prefer to take an update in the uh, portal, like in SAP, uh, how it will happen? They may take xe.com, there are different uh, sites. But whatever the site that you take, the closing rates will remain the same. Because these are not decided by anybody, right? These are bank decided rights. So, so but in audit, uh, sir, but in audit, uh, these uh, big four companies use Bloomberg Bloomberg sites. Sir. Right. But whatever the site you take, if we are talking about the historical rate, these are all based on the stock exchange. Yes. So whatever the site that you refer. Yeah, whatever the side that you refer, the historical rate will not get changed, right? So one side cannot say this is the rate, the other side cannot say this is the other rate. This comes into picture when you're buying and selling because the the third parties will add something called commission, correct? Huh? Yes. When you're buying and when you're selling, there is something called a commission. But when you're converting, you're not including the commissions, right? You're going to put conversion rate. Average rate according to every site will be the same. If every site is showing different rate, then there is no uniformity, right? There is no point of currency conversions. Yes, yeah. If you are taking the running rate, let's say if I am taking the current rate as a spot rate, my spot rate may differ. But when I'm taking the historical rate, historical rate will always stay constant.
So, so sir, every day not... user need to maintain the currency. Extend no, normally these are not maintained on a daily basis. These are maintained on a monthly basis. At the end of the month, so they we... will perform something called foreign currency valuation. These are all maintained in each system. Yeah, these are all to be maintained in separate separately in each system, right? Same as like FTX protect codes. Ah, correct. Hello. Yes. Uh, sir, same. Na. So, uh, in F dash zero two level, so I have posted five transactions, different different company co level with different dates. Okay. So I want to meet at uh, group reporting in the uh, uh, SAP level. Can I get it? If you wanted to do the group reporting at SAP level, you can generate, but SAP will not give you the consolidated data. You need to maintain group chart of account. You need to prepare group financial statement version. Normally, when you prepare the chart of financial statement version, you are going to refer the operating chart of account. Yes. And if you wanted to maintain consolidated reporting in SAP, you need to create group chart of account and you need to create group account numbers for every operating chart of account number. You must connect, you must assign one group chart of account number. So this is a tedious process which we normally do not use it because everybody will prefer BPC or any third party applications for consolidation. And uh, one more thing, uh, we are not selecting any ledger, right? So in this uh, screen level, so it will update in the both ledgers, right, sir? So, all the ledgers, so, all the ledgers that are applicable for your company code. Yeah. So zero uh, L, we are maintaining for group report, group level, re reporting level, right, sir? So when right. I select uh, in F dash zero one level, so so uh, what is the company? currency level 30 and 0 L. So it means uh, it is not in the consolidation level. So how only ledger level no. that is. Yeah, because for you to do any reporting, you need the data, right? You need the source transaction. Uh. Right. For that purpose, whenever you record any transaction, it will go update all your ledgers, all your currencies. Based yeah. on the requirement, you are going to pick the respective transaction from the respective ledger and then currency. But your transaction is one, but the reporting requirements are multiple. Correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. A reporting requirements in the sense? Like you need to prepare a reporting according to IFRS, according to Indian accounting standard, according to US CAP, different mm -hmm. ways. But it's a single yeah, transaction yeah. when you see it from the business point of view. Mm -hmm. Since you have two different type of requirements, you don't want to record the transaction two times. If that is the case, you are duplicating all the data. Yes, yes, that I understand. Yeah, but uh, that but is in, anyway, but anyway, uh, when I enter this way, so the entry will hitting into zero L, right, sir? So it means yeah, it'll we hit are making zero L. Uh, it it means hitting in the zero L ledger level, we are maintained group level. So, so uh, IFRS level also we are maintained according principle and group reporting level 30. And uh, what is the uh, accounting principle? And the the Indian accounting level. standard US cap, yeah, okay. No, uh, uh, group, group reporting is IFRS and uh, ledger is leading ledger so we are maintained for each each group level and uh, for leading ledger level so it uh, transaction hitting in the leading ledger so why i cannot get into consolidated in uh, all the company core levels in the, the particular period so we can get when it, you right? do so, it the uh, what system will do your data is based on company code correct correct if I talk about, let's say, rent. Okay, if I talk about rent, assuming that you have five company codes. 
and you are going to create one gl account you are going to extend one gl account in five company codes correct sir okay. let's say rent is 100 everywhere the moment you pull the data from sap it will show five times like this now everything you start receiving five times then you will be lost why it is appearing five times according to your your requirement your requirement is to do a consolidation reporting for consolidation every account should reflect to one time this one Ajay, what, time should be Ajay, the... what what is that back sound actually coming i think those who are Purva, someone will have Purva, to move. Can... yeah thank you <clears throat> Sir, since we are using the single chart of account, we are using the same uh, rent GL account we have just extended for the, all the company code. Why will it appear five times, sir? Won't it be one time and cumulated balance would be sitting there? Because any transaction that you record, your transactions are posted at company code level, not at the ledger level. Yeah, okay, okay, right. Okay, system, whenever you... Whenever you store any transaction, your transaction will never get stored at ledger level. It is always stored at company code. If you look at this transaction, there is no field called ledger only. Correct? Huh? Yeah. So when you are consolidating, you must give the company code. You are talking about consolidation because you have more than one company code. Am I correct? Yes. And when you are asking me to give the data, system will tell from where I should give the data. It will ask you to give the company code. And if you talk about five company codes, it will give you five records, one record from each company code. You are talking about consolidation because you wanted to group five into one. Correct? Huh? Now in your consolidation, you are not going to talk about rent. In rent, you may have different type of rent and you may be combining different, different GL accounts into common GL account when it comes to consolidation. If you want the detailed reporting, you always have company code level reporting wherein you get the detailed breakup. Let's say if I'm talking about salaries, I want to know how much salaries I have paid for this particular month. So according to my consolidation, I just need the total salary that is paid. But according to my company code reporting, I may require salary paid to the local staff, salary paid to the management staff, salary paid to the, you know, the daily uh, staff, salary paid to expats salary pay to you know the freelancers and all now i need the breakup in salary at a different gl account level so in the consolidation we don't need the breakup you don't need it you want to combine all five six gls into one common gl account so uh, there is a alternative gl account number is there right sir that is country specific is startup account so sir what you said this uh, points <clears throat> which is clear i think apart from this ifrs or like, like leading ledger this is uh, uh, working for uh, uh, accounting principle right ifrs wherein we can have some uh, valuation adjustment also so we can't say if they consolidated that is also point right right correct correct yeah. consolidation will always happen out of sap only straight forward so no point of any confusion here when we know the fact that nobody will use sap for consolidation no need to get any confusion straight away fix in your mind consolidation will happen out of sap which is bpc and it is the other way around when you are in the market when you tell that consolidation we are using sap why not bpc how did you do this in sap why you have not recommended bpc so these questions will come if you tell for consolidation your client was using bpc you don't get any question but the moment you tell the other way around, you will be cross questioned a lot because this is something which is not used in the real environment. Clear? Huh? There are certain things which we have to follow as it is. Yes, sir, it makes sense. Yeah, Cletus, you have a question. Yes, Ajay, um, I was wondering if there's going to be a time when you would actually dedicate us uh, understanding uh, the integration between uh, FICO and uh, the BPC. Because I, I begin to see in my mind things that we are assuming are done by FICO. You seem to be 
specifically now bringing out the role of a BPC consultant. And so I, I don't want my mind to be able to say something during an interview uh, when we know that it is not done by a FICO consultant, it's done by a BPC consultant only. Yes. So once we are at the transaction level, when we are generating the report, there I list out what reports we will be generating and what reports BPC consultant will do it and how data will go to BPC. I'll explain in a theoretical manner and then we'll close the point of BPC there. At the initial stage, since we are now talking about leading ledger, non-leading, local reporting, group reporting. So we are just trying to eliminate these confusions. Thank you. Yeah, OK, so once we are at the transaction level, so we will all have the same understanding. We are on the same page that this is the activity or this is what we will do it from SAP and the other things are not from SAP or are generated from out of SAP. There will be a different consultant for it. OK. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right, so we talked about currencies, currency conversion. So these points are clear, right? Yes. Uh, Achai, uh, the controlling only uh, reporting happens only on the group level. There is no, not on the local, uh, according to the uh, local gap. Is that right? Correct, correct. Yeah, okay, thank you. Because controlling is not governed by any accounting principle. The moment we talk about controlling area, it is pure internal. So there is nothing called accounting principle and all are not applicable for controlling. Okay. Okay. Controlling is all about your PL related transactions, the expenses and incomes, how you are uh, cutting down your cost, how you are monitoring, tracking your cost, how you are planning, how you are, uh, you know, uh, analyzing your profitabilities profits it's only pure internal reporting which does not have any accounting principle any law any rule for it so whatever the way you wanted to control your cost you can adopt those methodologies and then you can use your controlling okay. uh, sir okay, i will right. ask my another two questions uh, tomorrow because it's being late if you yeah. have this five minutes time, can you please complete this question? Yes, please go. Uh, this thing, two lines you written. Those lines you written right before you took the other questions we were discussing. This. Which one? Yeah, this, this controlling one? area. No, no, okay. these uh, green lines. Yeah, so yeah. here normally whenever you create controlling area, anyway, I'm about to discuss controlling area, which I'll explain tomorrow. Because we discussed a lot now, if I bring controlling area, it leads to confusion. That's why I've kept controlling aside. Yeah. So the second line okay. we can discuss that. Yeah. The controlling this area also I'll explain tomorrow. To okay, okay. This also I'll explain tomorrow because this is connected to your controlling area only. Regarding controlling area and there are some more small, small points like your tolerance group, tax procedure. This kind of a few more settings are there as part of our baseline. Those are simple ones, which will not take more than one hour. So then we will complete the remaining baseline config steps. And then from next week and onwards, we will be starting our configuration. So next Friday, sorry, next Saturday, we will list out KDS document. And from next Saturday onwards, we will be straight away on the configurations part. Okay, thank you. Actually, it's very small question, but you just say yes or no. My answer, like, like in asset accounting, uh, you create like representative ledgers. It's for one company code. Now you're not creating three company code for that. Is that right? Yes, that is company code specific. Okay, got it. Because you sure is creating three company code and is assigning to the uh, representative ledger, so he was getting error. So I came mm -hmm. to the conclusion that. Uh, uh, you creating for only one company code. Right. OK, thank you. Yeah. For document splitting, um, when doing a postings for 
two main um, ledger um, accounts. Um, is it possible to do a posting just to one profit center? Yes, if you when you say just one profit center, you mean assigning I mean, one sorry. profit center alone? Yes, just one profit center alone in a, in a, representing a yeah. one main ledger. Yes, you can do it. The other side, the other ledger will automatically pick the profit center from the offsetting account. And this is again dependent on your document splitting the configuration. Okay, okay. Because uh, I, I was thinking that maybe it, it automatically it automatically picks it up when it comes to sub ledger and main ledger trying to reconcile each other. So for main ledger, when we are doing it, we are supposed to give each of them each of their own profit center specifically. So these two points need to be noted when it comes to docs document splitting. GL master and the documented type will trigger whether the splitting will happen or not happen. These two combinations will have the influence or will have will decide whether it will split. If yes, how it is going to split. Clear? Huh? When we start the configuration of document splitting, I will explain what makes system to determine that it has to split or it should not split. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let me stop this recording. We'll, we'll continue the remaining part in the tomorrow's session. There are a few more points remaining in the baseline config, which we will discuss in the tomorrow's session. And from next week, we will discuss about KDS document and then we will proceeding with the configuration. All right, so we'll connect tomorrow at the same time. Good night.